Okay. I'm Rachel Osira, District Rotary Foundation Chair, uh, here with my um, co-host, Rick Thurneau from the Rotary Club of Homewood, who's our Paul Harris um, Fellow, major uh, Paul Harris Society Major Donor Chair. And we wanna welcome you to the um, Club Foundation Chair uh, training webinar this evening. So uh, welcome and, and thank you for joining us. Um, we are in webinar mode, so, um, you know, all, all of our um, attendees are muted, but if you have a question, I would ask that you um, put any question that you have in the Q&A. And in the meantime, um, we'd like to ask you to put your name, your club, and your email address in the chat so that we have a record. And I'll just say right up front that the materials that we're going to present this evening, as well as um, a, a copy of this recording and additional materials will be sent out. Um, links will be sent out to all of the attendees um, after the program. We had an identical session last week. So um, everyone who attended both sessions or, or even registered and may not have been able to attend will we'll get all of the materials. So again, um, we welcome you. Um, Rick, was there anything you wanted to add before we jump into the slides? Um, I would just like to say thank you to each and every one of you, uh, whether you volunteer or were assigned being foundation chair for your club. I truly, truly believe you have the best job in the club. And we'll talk this evening about that, but I mean that most sincerely. You have a great job, a great responsibility, and just make it a lot of fun this up and coming year. Absolutely. Okay. Well, I'm going to screen share our program. And um, play from the start. Can you see that, Rick? Yes, I can. Okay, so I assume everyone can. And again, um, if you have a question, please put it in the Q&A and we will stop from time to time to take a look at those questions and answer them along the way. And we'll have some time at the end as well to, um, to do it in a more free form way. So um, Rick couldn't have said it any better. We welcome you. Thank you for, for spending time with us this evening and, and thank you for what you're doing uh, taking on this very, very important role, uh, a fun role for your club. And I realize, you know, some of you are currently club foundation chairs and some of you might be coming into that role, but um, uh, you know, th this, this, is for, this is for everyone. We'd li also like you to share if, if you could um, in the chat, uh, anything you'd like to share that you're doing in your club that works well uh, or what do you find to be difficult? What do you need the most help with? Um, and if you have any special way of promoting giving to the annual fund, if you put it in the chat, everybody can see it and uh, we'll you know, um, stop and take a look at those later as well. So uh, we wanna make sure that you know um, who's all on the Rotary, our District Rotary Foundation Committee. They're, they're important um, resources. Uh, for you. And we will include a table of this information and how to contact each of these individuals with the information that you'll be getting after the program. Uh, our annual giving chairs, um, Mary Doherty, Mary's with us tonight, Florence Forche. Uh, Debbie Ross has been our Polio Plus chair. Um, Rick's got a lot of hats <laughs> uh, with our uh, Paul Harris Society chair, major donors, bequests and benefactors. Uh, our analytics chair, Chris Riley, he does a huge amount behind the scenes, um, keeping us straight on, on numbers. Anytime we're doing matching points, um, you can be sure that Chris is involved with that. Big important role is our grants chair, um, Pedro Savalos. Our district grants coordinator, Sue Lin. Global grants coordinator, Bruce George. Our scholarships chair, Bob Giles, and stewardship, um, Leslie Gottlinger and Bill Lyman. Bill's uh, here with us tonight, so welcome, Bill. Um, almost every year we do a, a fundraiser um, at, at White Sox uh, Park for Polio Plus, and Irv Kaplan has been chairing that. We missed it last year. We hope to be back next this year. And then our auditor, Rob Han. 
So um, these are all the, the folks on the foundation committee. And again, we'll give you their contacts and um, you know, so you can get a hold of them. We're going to go through some overview information um, that, that's really important. And then we're going to take a look at some background information about the foundation and our district's impact, then get into uh, you know, some, some of the, the tools that you'll, you'll use in, in your role and reports and foundation points and um, how to work with your club. But we want to take some time on this slide just talking about the club Rotary Foundation chair role. So if you think about it, um, there's really two aspects of it. One is to inspire your club members to give to the foundation. Um, and, and you know, it, it, uh, there's a lot to that. Um, so inspire is such an important word. And then also getting them to participate in the activities of the foundation, the grants program, giving to polio, um, recommending people to be peace scholars, etc. We've got a table here of responsibilities. We're not going to read every box because you're going to you're going to get this information uh, available to you. But we do want to hit some of the highlights. Rick, you want to jump in with any um, of the responsibilities you'd like to to really um, bring to people's attention? Well, I, I really think you have a couple of responsibilities, as Rachel said, to inspire your club members to support the foundation. But whenever I speak about the foundation, I don't say that. I say our foundation because I think it's important for Rotarians to take ownership in our foundation. Those people up in Evanston might think it's their foundation, but it's your foundation, it's my foundation, it's truly all of ours foundation. And I would encourage you, you know, to really try to learn more about the foundation through meetings like this and other foundation meetings we have through the year. Uh, Rachel, myself, and others are more than happy to be programs at your club. And I would really strongly encourage you to read different things about the foundation. There's a book called Frank Talk on our Rotary Foundation. If you want Foundation for Dummies, that's a really good book. Our biggest project is Conquering Polio, and they would have two books on that. And then there was Doing Good in the World for the first 100 years of our foundation. And once you really start learning what our foundation does and how good we are, you take even greater you know, responsibility and greater pride in what we do. And guess what? That enthusiasm that you have will rub off on your club members. Couldn't, couldn't have said it better. And uh, one of the things we'll do, hey, Rick, if you wouldn't mind, if you have a chance to type in the names of those books in the chat. Okay. While we're while we're going along here, and um, you know, we'll be sure to to share that with with everyone, whenever it's convenient. Um, I'm going to point out a couple of things that are really important to your role, and it gives you access to the tools um, to reports in particular. It's critical that your club president set up your role as club foundation chair in MyRotary.org. So if you're currently a club foundation chair that should be in place. If you're an incoming foundation chair on July 1st, it's your president-elect that needs to set that up and your access won't start until July 1st, but it's critical that they, that they go in and do that. That'll give you um, the ability to run foundation reports for your club and access the data in Club Central um, for foundation. And we're gonna learn a bit more about that. You see, on the right, the My Rotary screen, um, uh, where it says um, manage, you know, when you click on manage and you get district and club administration, you know, way down there on the left, you see this reports and, and that's where a lot of this information is. So you won't be able to do that unless your president sets you up um, in Club Central, which they should do but it doesn't always happen. So we wanna make sure that, that you're aware from your end. And my Rotary, just, just wanna um, highlight what an important resource it is. Um, almost everything you need to conduct uh, Rotary business is, is there at your fingertips. Um, monitoring your membership initiatives, um, service activities, foundation giving goals in Rotary Club Central. You know, the president or the, 
currently the president elect sets up those goals and that information, but you'll be able to see that progress. Giving to the Rotary Foundation online um, through My Rotary, you'll be able to view your donor history uh, through My Rotary and your profile. You'll see your contribution history um, at the summary level and transactions through You'll, you'll see a lot more about our Rotary Foundation activities. If you go on the Rotary Foundation section of my Rotary, it's just rich, rich, rich with information. Apply for grants in the Grant Center. Um, you can find, there, there's a, a section called Rotary Showcase, which is, which is really great. And you can go in and um, of highlight projects that you're, that you've finished or projects that you're working on, you're looking for funders, you're looking for volunteers. Um, so it's, it's, it's a really wonderful tool. If we have time at the end, we can go in and, and take a look at that as well. And something else I wanna highlight, um, through my Rotary, there's the Online Learning Center, which has been offering more and more things. And, and there's um, one program in particular for called Club Rotary Foundation Committee Basics. And we'll have the link to this in, in the resources that we send out to you. But it, it's a great place to, um, again, get some of this grounding information about the foundation, um, fundraising basics, you know, uh, looking at reports, um, looking at information in Club Central, and really important, protecting personal data. When you run reports, you'll be seeing you know, personal data, and we have an obligation to protect that data. And there, there's a nice one on Rotary's areas of focus as well. Um, since I'm uh, blabbering about my Rotary, Rick, anything you would you would throw in and uh, and highlight? Nope, I think you hit it all. And just side note, I did put all those titles and authors okay. in the chat area. Okay, great, wonderful. I see that there is a question. Are you able to see the Q and A, Rick? Uh, yes, I can. Would you, uh, when I'm sh screen sharing, I can't see it unless I stop screen sharing. I think there's a question in there. You want to take a look and see yes. what it says? Uh, somebody from Bradley Bourbon, I will mention, were we supposed to sign in somewhere? Uh, yes, in the chat, correct, Rachel, in the chat area, please put your name, your club, and your email address. Great, thank you. Okay. So we're going to um, do a, an overview of, of the Rotary Foundation. It's, you know, it's important that we, um, you know, we are we're aware of all the, uh, the different um, aspects to the foundation and what they do and the, the impact that our district has had. And we're going to move through this, you know, pretty quickly. But again, it'll all be available to you. And as Rick said earlier, we're also available to um, speak to your club or, you know, help help you in any way that you need. So yes, it's our foundation, you know, our Rotary Foundation is our foundation for doing good in the world through our life changing projects. And there are the Rotary Foundation um, has uh, five major funds that we support the annual fund, which supports our service projects, both locally and globally, as well as our peace centers. Our Polio Plus Fund, which is the, you know, what we use to, um, that, that's the fund that we use to help eradicate polio in partnership with our um, Global Polio Eradication Initiative partners. Our, our foundation grants, um, our Disaster Response Fund, which started up a few years ago, and the Endowment Fund. And we'll spend a little bit of time on, on each of those areas. So um, we'll... Just take a quick look here at the mission of the Rotary Foundation. Rick, you want to take this? Sure. I think it's important to understand the mission and just to read what you're all seeing. To enable Rotarians to advance world understanding, goodwill, and peace through improvement of health, the support of education, and the alleviation of poverty. And I think something that really dovetail on that is any foundation talk I give, I really try to explain to people, you and I don't live in the real world. <laughs> we really don't live in the real world. If you took the very bottom person in the United States because of their situation, they are heads and shoulders above 
the rest of the world. And I'm going to just give you three statistics to show this point. More than 2 billion people around the world do not have a safely managed drinking water services. 3 billion lack basic hand washing facilities. Worldwide, 2.3 billion, that's one out of every three people, lack basic sanitation services. And these statistics could go on and on, but we're really trying to make a difference in the world. So I really think if you're gonna narrow the mission of the Rotary Foundation, it is really to change the world. Right, to provide the promise of a better future. Um, that's that's what, what we're all about, our foundation. And, you know, for the reason that you said, you know, our foundation is unique. Yeah, it's, it's, um, it's a foundation where uh, we as Rotarians, you know, give to the foundation and we are then able to uh, do service projects, fight polio. Um, really what we've got through our, our clubs and our organization is a network of community volunteers. So it, it's, uh, a very unique uh, foundation. And, and I think, you know, when I look at other membership organizations, um, I think that's what really sets Rotary apart is our ability to participate together in the Rotary Foundation to, um, you know, do the types of things that uh, make the types of impact that Rick was talking about just a moment ago. And so we have currently six areas of focus that the foundation is dedicated to are our causes. And, and Rick just you know, read some really sobering statistics about um, water and sanitation. But we also work on basic education and literacy, disease prevention and treatment, maternal and child health, peace building and conflict prevention, community and economic development. And then starting July 1st, supporting the environment. We'll be having a seventh area focus. So there's really um, no limit to how we can work together, the types of problems and issues that we can address and make a difference. Rick, you wanna take this and uh, talk about why it's the best investment you can possibly make giving to the Rotary Foundation? Absolutely. First of all, our foundation every year is ranked at the highest level of how prudent we are with our dollars, with so much of the money going towards the causes that we support. And we really watch how much is going for administrative. And really, if you look around the world, we're doing projects here in your community, my community, throughout the United States, but we're doing work around the world. And our foundation is always looked at as a really well-run foundation and truly making a difference. Thank you. And if anybody's wondering about the photo, almost all the photos you see here are photos, you know, from our projects, from our district. And this is a photo um, provided by the Rotary Club of Kankakee from their third grade dictionary project a few years ago. I just, I love this picture. To me, it, it says um, so much about why we do what we do. The eradication of polio, the promise of a world without polio is the Rotary Foundation signature project. Um, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation is, is one of our partners in the global polio eradication initiative. And you know they've acknowledged that Rotary is the heart and soul of polio eradication. We were the first with the vision of a polio free world, which at the time was an audacious vision, but look how close we are. Look how close we've come. Um, over $2 billion has been committed. You, you know, you see the statistics on the lives saved, the cases averted. You know, cases, uh, you know, is, is a simple word, but you were talking about a, a very crippling disease. So, you know, people who've been able to lead a normal life who otherwise wouldn't have. 3 billion children immunized. And last year, a huge milestone was achieved when the continent of Africa was declared polio free. So there's only two countries left where polio is endemic, Afghanistan and Pakistan. And we know it's not simple, you know, that it's, it's um, you know, it, it's important that we continue to invest in this really, really important project. 
um, through funding. We get, we're getting a two for one match for every dollar by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. It's important that we see this, this project through. We've learned a lot from COVID-19, how important our efforts to eradicate polio are, our um, network for um, going door to door, our cold chain, you know, a lot of that. Uh, was used with the, the COVID-19 pandemic, pand pandemic um, in uh, a lot of lessons learned there. So we wanna keep, uh, keep our focus strong. Rick, I know this, you've done a lot at Homewood to um, elevate the awareness of the importance of this. Anything you wanna discuss? Absolutely. Add? Two things I'd like to share with you. Um, at the 2011 International Convention in New Orleans, the number one reason my wife and I went was Bill Gates was the keynote speaker. And how many times do you get to say, I saw Bill Gates live? But he stood at that podium to the audience saying, the number one goal of our foundation, meaning the Gates Foundation, is to help Rotary rid the world of polio. Now that's Bill Gates saying that. And he's and his wife aren't going to support an organization that isn't going to accomplish what they start. It's easy to say we're going to do something, but I think the Gates know we are going to complete this mission of ridding the world of polio. But the other thing I think you should be aware of uh, how vast that Rotary has done on polio eradication. The other day I heard that I think at the United States or in the United Center in Chicago, they immunized 6,000 people. And that's a tremendous number, don't get me wrong. But on one national immunization day, it was actually two days, we as an organization with help immunized 150 million children. Now think about this, that's 6,000 children a second. That's an incredible thing. No other organization around the world has ever accomplished that. And I think that says a lot for Rotary. So keep that in mind and share that news with your club members because I really think that's the way to excite your club members about our foundation. Thank you, Rick. Next, I want to draw our attention to the annual fund share system. Um, again, this is a, a very unique system. Uh, when we donate to, to the annual fund, those, those monies are invested for three years. And after three years, they come back and they're shared. And it's through the annual fund share system that we're able to do our projects, our district grant projects, our global grant projects locally and globally. So, um, it, let's say a thousand dollars is um, is donated. That thousand dollars goes off for three years, and then the principal thousand dollars comes back, and half of it goes to the World Fund, where it's used for global grants and our um, peace centers and in several other initiatives, and then half of it comes back to the district, comes back to us, and you know that's the really special thing about the Rotary Foundation, where we give but we also get back and we're able to do projects together of our choosing through the use of our district designated funds. So I'm gonna look at a slightly busier um, uh, picture here that says the same thing, but you'll see um, the World Fund on, on the left there. And then the monies that come back to the district, district designated funds, half of it we put toward global grants DDF, District Designated Fund Matching. And the other half we put toward district grants, which are um, smaller projects that we do annually. So we're gonna take a, a dive into what that looks like and show the impact that, that the district has had. So uh, just to differentiate, district grants are those short-term projects, they're small in scale. Um, clubs get base, back based on what they gave um, three years prior, and they can be used for local or international, and they're, they're done within a given rotary year. The, the photo that you see there, that was another dictionaries project. I think that was the Darien um, Club had, had done that project. The global grants are large scale, long-term sustainable projects. They have to align with one of the areas of focus. It's always in partnership. So there's a partnership between a local club where the project is being done and an international club from another country, you know, working together to plan and implement those projects. That's what we talked about, that network 
of community volunteers, you know, all around the world. And that is the magic of Rotary and the magic of the Rotary Foundation as much as anything is us, you know, working together. And then there's matching that comes um, from the world fund of the district designated funds that are contributed. So those are the two, you know, different major different types of projects. We do a lot of both. Um, the picture you see there is a project that was done in Nigeria, um, the Rotary Club of Chicago Southeast. Uh, I think it was when Osei and David Andrews Hutchinson was district governor. We had a vocational training team go over and teach um, how to do cleft palate surgery. So you see um, one of the doctors um, from here from Chicago who went on the trip and he's with a little girl who had just gone through the surgery. And it's, it's, it's hard to make it out, but um, she's uh, smiling and her parents, you know, what they see before and after is remarkable. Then you see a photo of the actual surgery going on. So um, that is one of the amazing projects that we've done. Now, I recently went and did an update on our humanitarian footprint, and it's really, really big. This is all about global grants. Um, that program started in 2013. It was called Future Vision, and this has been an amazing um, program. And in that time, our district has been a sponsor uh, of 66 global grants, either approved in progress or completed. So we've been a sponsor club, um, a partner, uh, either locally or globally. And, and the dots that you see on the globe on the map are all the different locations where we've done projects. We actually need to add a couple more dots. And the projects that we've done, because of the magic of our Rotary Foundation, the monies that come from the World Fund, you know, matching um, the club cash in the past, matching our district designated funds that are donated, $4.7 million approximately in total funding has gone in. And about 63% of those funds were provided by the Rotary Foundation, almost two thirds. That is remarkable. And, and, and that's what we're, you know, we're talking about by, by giving, by working together, you know, we're able to do so much and really stretch our resources. We've been in 24 countries in that period of time, and almost half of our clubs in District 6450, 25 clubs, have been sponsor clubs on a global grant. Rick, your club's um, done a couple of global grants. Can you just share how that feels and the impact it's had on your club? Oh, it's huge. It's huge. Our club, um, even before global grants uh, with, with a different name, we, Matching grants. <laughs> uh, yeah, we have done, I'm counting here, I believe seven total, seven or eight. And the club gets around it, but the key is if a club member or club members can actually go to where you're doing the work, the enthusiasm they're going to bring back of what they've experienced just turns on the whole club. So I would encourage you to get your clubs to do a global grant or partner with another club. You don't have to do it by yourself because it can be overwhelming. And it's just like ridding the world of polio. We didn't, we're not doing it all by ourselves. So I would encourage you start out slow, Te team up with a club that's doing something and then get to the point where you want to be the lead club and it will truly change your club. And if somebody's able to actually go on and see the work you've done, it's just amazing. Yeah, absolutely. And, and one of the rules in our district for clubs doing global grants is they have to have collaborating clubs from the district join them in some capacity. So, you know, if, if your club can afford a $500 investment, then you can be a collaborating club on a global grant. So, And one thing that we do when we team up with other clubs, if it's their project, we support them financially, but we tell them we want a program then on what mm -hmm. is being done. And ideally we like to see pictures because that keeps us involved as opposed to just writing a check. Yeah, absolutely. And, and there's also a great opportunity if you have an Interact Club, you know, to, to get them linked in as well. A lot of these projects, um, I mean, they can, they can learn a lot from being involved and there's you know, often children involved, you know, 
it, where the project is occurring and it, it's, it's just a, a great all around experience. Just wanna share a little bit of impact information about our foundation donations that work last year, the Rotary year that finished up last June. So in the district, oh, we had district grants, we had $41,000 of district funds that were provided um, to our clubs, 34 clubs participated, 46 projects, uh, just a whole array, all different types of projects. Um, don't have time this evening to go in, into all those details, but um, you know, we um, can, um, there, there, there's information on, on our district website about, about them. The picture you see here, I think that was the Chicago Northwest Club. They were working with um, Center Home for the Hispanic Elderly and they were supporting um, them during COVID-19. They were you know, short of resources and they like so many of our clubs, you know, helped out uh, a lot of um, uh, uh, programs in their community, food pantries, um, homes, nursing homes with their needs. Um, Rick, I, I'm trying to remember what your, your club, I'm trying to remember what project, oh, that you all worked on um, this last year for, for COVID? Just, yeah. Well, we did a variety of different projects uh, okay. supporting different organizations. So they had financial resources to buy the mask and everything else yeah. that they needed uh, to the tune, I believe we spent about $10,000. So, I mean, we made a huge impression in our geographic area of supporting different organizations that needed supplies and so forth during COVID or still during COVID. I know it, it yeah, absolutely. And what a difference we made when we first got started um, providing a lot of relief. Last year for global grants, our district uh, provided almost $100,000 of district funds into the global grants that uh, were funded last year, almost a million, over a million and a half total funding uh, went in. So budget of almost one, over $1.5 million. We had 11 of our clubs participate as sponsor clubs. We had 14 projects that were funded in all six areas of focus, which, which is really remarkable to have done something in each of those areas of focus. And you see the, the different countries involved. And we had a couple of um, global grants that were approved, you know, here in our local area. And to, we have to remember that we can do global grants here too, as long as we have an international partner. We have, we have needs in our community um, as well. The, the picture you see there is a, a project that the uh, Chicago Heights Park Forest Club did with a um, partner club in India. They put in, um, gender um, separated toilet blocks with wash stations, hand washing and hygiene stations in 11 um, primary schools. And the project was initially focused on providing those for girls because it was, you know, girls who for whom the facilities in particular um, weren't adequate and a lot of girls would drop out of school, especially when they started um, uh, having their, their um, menstrual hygiene, menstrual periods occur because there wasn't really hygiene facilities and their education stopped. So that was the initial focus. And the Rotary Foundation came back and said, well, you have to include boys too. You have to do both. And, and, and so of course they, they did. And it's been uh, an absolutely wonderful project. This is just one of the schools and you can see the, the quality of the facilities that were, were put in and the impact it had on the community. I mean, not only were they doing this in the school, but they were you know, training the kids and their families on, you know, the hand washing techniques, you know, Rick mentioned some, um, some statistics earlier and uh, about clean water hygiene and sanitation. So you can, you know, see um, the impact that that we have had. And the other, can you go back for a minute, Rachel? Absolutely. If you look at that top picture from the global grant, you'll see between the set two sets of people, there's probably a plaque there, you know, who provided this. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to go crazy. And it's nothing being boastful or conceited, but I think it's important for that to be put up even so they know that Rotary, whether it's Homewood Rotary, Naperville, Chicago Heights, or whoever it might be, they're not gonna have a clue. They'll never visit probably the United States or our area, but it 
lets them know that there's an organization out there trying to make a difference. Our club does a lot of work in Sierra Leone because of one of our club members. And he just got back from Sierra Leone. But while he was there, he sent me a picture of a water tower. On the water tower is painted Rotary International Homewood Rotary. So it's, it's a way for the, those people to know somebody cares. And it's a nice thing for all of us to kind of get a pat on the back. Not that we need it, but it's still nice to get that pat on the back. Actually, it's really, really important um, because people need to know that that Rotary is involved. I mean, our, our foundation and our clubs can't thrive um, if, if people aren't aware. You know, it, it attracts people to Rotary and it, and it keeps you know, keeps us going. So it, it, you know, it, it is important to do that. We must um, make sure that we, we share that information. And then just, you know, rounding out a couple of areas where our Rotary Foundation donations were at work for us last year um, in a big way, Polio Plus. So there are a number of different ways that we all contributed to Polio Plus among our clubs, you know, as individuals, almost $57,000 of donations. Um, some of the clubs chose to use their district grant allocations for um, matching their Polio Plus contributions. So they were submitted as district designated funds, almost over $9,000. And the World Fund matched those 100%, another $9,000. The Gates Foundation matched all of these two to one, which provided almost $225,000 in total funding. So that um, the, the donations to polio really are, are amplified and, and really add up. And, Rachel, and, we have a couple of questions that I can address them. Absolutely, jump right in that. Okay, um, somebody asked for the plaque that is put on a global grant, is it okay to, uh, to do both districts? And then they go on to say, I mean, the names of the part, partner clubs and the district numbers. Absolutely. Yeah. Don't be bashful. The more, the better, because if nothing else is teamwork, we're all in this together. And there's apps. I've never heard of anybody saying no. So however you want to do it is just fine. Yeah. And I'm sorry, we couldn't, we couldn't zoom in on that, but I can assure you that is exactly what's on that plaque is it's, um, the names of the local clubs, but the, the, the two partner clubs and the districts. So absolutely, um, you want to do that. And then last year, we also had a disaster um, response grant that we received because of COVID-19. Uh, we, we donated $5,000 of our district designated funds um, to the disaster response fund. We applied for a $25,000 grant, which we received. We also had um, uh, two of our club's foundations uh, matched uh, with an additional $6,000. So through that, we were able to fund 31 projects involving 30 clubs. We basically made $1,000 you know, grants available to our, our clubs on a first come first serve basis of submitting those. And it, it, we had the money in our hands, I think by late April and, and turn those over to the clubs and just did um, all kinds of things. You know, Rick, you mentioned earlier some of the work your club did, a lot of food pantry work. This photo here is Chicago Little Village. They supported a couple of food pantries in their community that were really struggling. So um, again, uh, we had a, a big, big, big um, impact and it was good that through the Rotary Foundation, we were able to um, get these funds early and make a difference at, at the time it was needed the most. So we're gonna um, show just a, a couple of, of global grants here. Um, it's important to tell the story. You know, we're spending some time tonight, you know, telling these stories and that's a really important thing um, that you as club foundation chairs will, you know, facilitate with your clubs. It's the why, you know, it's those, those personal stories that that really draw people in and um, make them want to, to give so that they can um, you know support the good work and also be involved in, in doing the projects. This photo here or this slide here is um, a project that the Rotary Club of Naperville Sunrise did 
several years ago with a club in Guatemala. Uh, there was a community that, that lived off of a garbage dump. Um, they repurposed um, the materials there. The government uh, came in and put in you know, new um, concrete block housing for them, but they still had to walk every day to, there was one central spigot where they would get their water. And on the left, you see all the different, you know, buckets and, you know, things that they carried to walk to get that water every day. And the water supply was on for, for one hour a day. And, the, and, you know, whatever you're able to collect and haul back, that's, that was your water. And, and then you probably had to boil it if you could um, to make sure it was still clean. So the project was to put in um, water tanks and supply lines for 32 families. So you see the, the, the water tank and there was piping that went into their house and supply line you know, back to the central um, water point. And they were able to have clean running water. I mean, they had to manage how much they were using but they basically had clean running water all day. And I mean, look at the difference the before and after and the impact on the families has been absolutely tremendous. And so the, the clubs are working together now, they're implementing their second project for 35 families in the community. And the other thing to get from all this, about a thousand plus children die each day from waterborne diseases. And mm -hmm. if you're collecting bad water, you're drinking bad water, I can almost assure you you're going to get sick. And I have seen in Haiti, people having walked through the dump to get to the river to get water. And some of the little kids don't want to walk that far. So they take it out of the, the little creek that goes right through the dump and bring that water back. And I can assure you, you wouldn't let your dog drink that water. No, no. And, and here's um, just a, a, another project I want to highlight. This was a local global grant that we did last year, um, COVID-19. It was a, a really um, collaborative project uh, with, uh, I think we had 39 clubs from our district participating where we supplied iPads to nursing homes and um, what we call local safety net hospitals, community hospitals within the greater Chicagoland area. You know, it, it started actually was, um, I was president of, of my club last year, the Rotary Club of Naperville. And we just did a little project, you know, in our club, we cold called the nursing homes in our community and just asked if this would be helpful to them. And they were, they were just overwhelmed, you know, of, of this offer um, because the residents and the nursing homes, if you remember, were isolated and, uh, and many still are. They, they were no longer, you know, they were kept to their rooms. Family couldn't visit. Um, even, you know, healthcare workers couldn't come in. So they would use the iPads for, for FaceTime to be able to, to talk to family members. And they were also able to use them for telehealth with communication to their, their doctors and their, um, and, 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 and their, their healthcare contacts. And it was just absolutely transformative. So, you know, we, we looked at, well, you know, let's, let's do more, let's do bigger. So we had so many requests coming in. We had 39 of our clubs join in and contribute, get involved in the project, recommend nursing homes or safety net hospitals in their community. Over 260 iPads have, have gone out and, and it was the clubs, you know, that distributed them. Once we got them in, we reached out to each club to distribute. And those are all the, the photos that you see, uh, different clubs. Um, these are just a handful of the photos uh, doing that. We had three other districts um, join us as contributors. The, there's a club in Tokyo that um, was our partner, our, our official international partner. And they were so touched, um, they contributed $13,000 of district designated funds, which was matched 100% by the Rotary Foundation. And then they contributed some club money too. So all in all, almost $30,000 to this project. Um, and then we had a club in, in the district in Croatia um, join us as well. So it is, you know, truly Rotarians working together globally um, 
to make an impact. And uh, Rick, is there anything you want to, you know, add to this? This. Um, nope, you did story? a very good job. Okay, excellent. Very good. And this year, you know, we we had uh, our district grant projects um, that you know, the clubs. Um, uh, applied for with the monies that they were allocated, but we also had a special program that was focused on early childhood education. And we made $500 grants available, you know, to clubs um, to be able to have an impact on the learning gap in, in particular that underserved, you know, low income families um, experience. And we had 30 seven Rotary Clubs and one Rotary Act Club respond and do some type of early childhood education project. We have a little video that, that's on our, our district website, which we're, we're not gonna show it tonight, but it's a montage you know, of photos and if you're at district conference and you don't wanna miss district conference, we're gonna do a little bit more on the early childhood education um, projects, which have been you know, really, especially needed um, during the pandemic. And one more uh, here, we have a, a, a local project, it's a global grant to put in a multi-sensory multi therapeutic gym on the south side of Chicago for you know, kids with special needs. And it's an area where there, there really aren't facilities like this available. So we are filling a unique need uh, it's a project that was um, done by the Chicago Six Corners Club with, uh, in partnership with a, a, a club from Mexico. And we were um, well on our way and then the pandemic hit and everything had to stop, but it's back on track and the ribbon cutting is just um, a month and a half away. It's, it's May 15th. So uh, we look forward to that opening up and um, and, and being able to help a, a lot of kids and a lot of families. We've got a, a rent-free deal for 10 years. So it's um, uh, off to a great start. And then we, one of the other things that the foundation funds is our peace centers. Rick, you wanna add anything on the peace centers and the Peace Scholar program? Um, I think briefly what I could add is, it's just amazing what Rotary is doing to really, you know, get people around the world learning how to be, you know, work together and interact in a peaceful manner. And it's just another area of our foundation that I think probably 99% of the Rotarians don't even know exist. So as you're reading up on things, this would be a definite area to learn more. Yeah. And, and just sharing, you know, in, in the years that we've had the Peace Scholar program, we've had about a thousand alumni go through it and are, most of them are all, you know, working in some capacity somewhere around the world in peace and conflict um, resolution. Just do a little quick commercial. Um, we're gonna have a Rotary Foundation uh, rec recognition event, an online event on May 27th. So mark your calendars for that. You will all be getting an invitation to join us online. We're going to be, you know, celebrating our new Paul Hyer Society members, major donors, um, our uh, clubs that earned banners last year, but we're going to have one of our peace scholars um, as our speaker. And we might have some um, little short videos as well from some of our other peace scholars. So you won't wanna miss that. So mark your calendar for May 27th. And, and then the disaster response grants, um, we mentioned earlier, this is a new thing that Rotary, a new fund that Rotary established about four years ago, the disaster response fund where a district anywhere in the world, if they're affected by a disaster, um, can apply for up to a $25,000 grant that they get really pretty quickly to help alleviate the effects of the disaster in their community. Um, the foundation did a huge response to COVID-19. You know, we applied for and received a, a, a grant. But as you can see from the photos, you know, a, 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 a lot of the disasters are, are physical disasters, um, hurricanes, earthquakes, and you know it gives Rotarians a chance to, you know, help out locally um, in their in their community when a disaster like this strikes. 
And then we have the endowment fund. Uh, Rick, you want to um, give a little bit on that? Well, really what the name says, endowment. This is something that Rotary is trying to build. And the goal by 2025 is to have approximately you know, $2 billion there, 2025, so $2.025 billion. But this is a, a, a pot of money, if you will, that's ongoing. It's not meant to be spent like the annual fund. And to fund so many of our projects, it's the earnings off that endowment that is going to sustain Rotary for the next hundred years. Great, and thank you, Rick. So that um, th those are all the, the different funds uh, uh, from the Rotary Foundation. We also wanna highlight our district strategic goals ar around the foundation. Um, we wanna put the awareness of Rotary's impact you know, right out in front, put the why first. That's why we spent some time tonight you know, talking about specifically, you know, what's unique about the Rotary Foundation, why it's our foundation, and the impact that the district is having. It's so important to put that why first, tell those stories. We're trying to increase our giving to the annual fund. Um, that's a stretch goal, $300,000, but it's important to have a stretch goal. If we don't you know, give at that level um, to the annual fund, our ability to participate in the grants program will diminish because the, the funds that we get back for district grants and global grant support is based exclusively on what we donate to the annual fund. There, there's no other way to get district designated funds than by giving to the annual fund. So it's really, really important for us to do that, but for us, you know, our members to understand that it gives us the opportunity to participate in projects of our choice. We're trying to increase our giving to, to Polio Plus. Um, we you know, hit our milestone you know, much earlier uh, this Rotary year than we have in the past. We had an exciting campaign. And uh, Rick, you wanna um, say a little bit about the, the next uh, goal? Sure. Our Paul Harris Society are, is made up of Rotarians in our district who have committed. It doesn't mean Uncle Beto's gonna come out and get you if you don't follow through with it, but they have made a pledge to give $1,000 a year to our foundation. And prior to 2005, I was governor in 2005, 2006, and as incoming governor, you have to make a, a pledge, if you will, to the foundation what you think the district would give. And I heard that our district always gave 140,000 but nobody could come up with a good reason why. And I was raised by a Rotarian in this district and that did not fly at my house when growing up. So we started the Paul Harris Society and the amazing thing right now, we have just over a hundred people in the society and not all of them every year give a thousand dollars a year, but for the annual fund, believe it or not, 20% of the money that goes into that are from the Paul Harris societies from around the world. And our district since we started it has donated over a million dollars to the foundation just by the givers of the Paul Harris Society. And not everybody's of means that they can do that. But if I think part of your job is to uncover those individuals in your clubs that might be able to do that. And with that, talk to them about the Paul Harris Society. And I was gonna bring this up later, but I'll bring it up now. If you're uncomfortable doing that, I don't have a problem. If you have a club member that you would like me to sit down with you and that club member and talk about giving in any capacity, you know, whether it's the Paul Hare Society, a major donor or Bequest Society, which we'll talk about later, you know, I'm more than happy to do that. And, you know, the use of Rotary Direct, Rotary Direct is having that money automatically debited or charged to your credit card. Now, I find it easy. I do mine $250 a quarter, and I actually use my Rotary credit card so there's more money going back to the foundation, and I earn airline miles. So it's one thing for your club to charge you on your dues, which is fine, but you know, by me using my credit card, uh, I actually get mileage for it too, so there is something in it for me as well. But Rotary Direct makes it easy. The hardest thing is when your credit card gets updated, you have to update the information with Rotary but that's not, you know, brain surgery. Thank you, Rick. That's that's so well said. 
And, and our other big goal uh, is to grow the club participation in the grants program. And I think you could see from the stories we were telling and the number of clubs participating that, you know, we're making a lot of, a lot of progress with that. So, um, but we want to, we want to get all the clubs in, involved. So we, we keep working toward it. So we're going to um, start to dive into, you know, some of the, the goal setting, the tools um, with you tonight. So Oops, we'll go back here. Developing goals for your club. Very, very important. You always want to start the year um, with those goals. So at the RI level, our, our goal is every Rotarian every year, uh, where on average, um, every member gives $100 a year to the annual fund. And for a club to qualify for every Rotarian every year, it's $100 per average, but every member has to give at least $25 um, to the annual fund. Now, overall, globally, about a third of the Rotarians support the annual fund in our district. It's, it's um, almost two thirds. But imagine what we would be able to do with our grants programs, you know, with our, our service projects, if every Rotarian you know, gave um, to the annual fund every year. So, so that's really at the forefront of what we're, 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 we're trying to do um, for all the reasons that you saw. So you wanna work with your, um, in your incoming president and your club leaders on setting those goals. All the president of elects have been um, asked to put their goals into Club Central. It includes goals for the foundation, quite a few goals, but the critical ones are the annual fund goal and the polio plus fund goal. If you're currently um, set up as a club foundation chair, you can go into Club Central and you can see this information as well. There's also a report that you can run that we'll show you in a minute. And you can see what, you know, the trend has been of your goal and your achievement, you know, what your membership level is. So you'll wanna, you know, look at this and, and work with your club president and your club leaders and make sure these are shared goals. There's a report that you can run as well called the club fundraising analysis. It's a five-year snapshot. It only shows the annual fund, um, but it gives you other information, the per capita, the membership, and you can see the trends, you know, how many every Rotarian every year members you had, sustaining members, which um, are people, people who actually give $100 or more to the annual fund and people who are Paul Harris Society eligible. Rick mentioned a, a minute ago that that's a donation every year of, of $1,000. You don't automatically become a member of Paul Harris Society when you give $1,000 a year you have to um, apply to, to join the society. But this lets you know how many people are eligible, which is um, important. You'll wanna, if somebody's eligible, with it, but they're not a member, you want to make them aware and um, ask them to join. So just some, some um, once you set those annual fund goals, um, you want to make sure you share those, that you have an action plan, you know, to support achieving those goals. And most importantly is the motivation, um, you know, having a committee, motivating your, your committee members, and then sharing that with your club members as well um, and getting everybody in, involved in it. Rick, you anything you want to add to... Um, uh, you know, making the annual, making our goals achievable? Um, no, I really think though, Rachel hit the nail on the head. I'm doing this uh, in April of my uh, incoming president, the president following is to sit down with them and really work at what is the goal. Don't just put the figure down that you put down for the last 20 years, really raise the bar. I'm a big believer in goals. So raise the bar and then raise it some more but you really should have a conversation with your president elect. And if you have a succession plan in your club to keep, you know, a couple of, so that you're all working together. Um, while I have the mic, uh, Rachel, you have a question here. How do you access the trend information? Okay. Um, so the, I'll go back to here. Um, 
This is in Club Central. So you have to go into My Rotary and you go into the section called Manage and there's um, Club Administration and Club Central will come up and you go into Club Central and this, this information is there. It's accessible to anyone who's identified as an officer of the club. So it's important if you're the club foundation chair that your club president has entered your name into the, the club administration um, database and you'll be able to see this. And that's and very important for that individual to put your name in there. Yes, yes. And if you have any difficulty with that or it's not happening or you're not sure, reach out to us and we can tell you whether you're in there or not. Reach out to Rachel. She's much better <laughs> at that than me. And if you're an incoming foundation chair, you'll have access on July 1st, as long as your, your name is entered. And this is a report, the club um, fundraising analysis. So we're going to go through reports in, in a few minutes, but you can run this report. But again, your name has to be, be entered. So we're going to move on to foundation recognition points. And uh, it's, it's an important topic. Um, so uh, we want to make sure that you know everybody has a handle on that. So under, and they're also called Paul Harris Fellow Points. So you'll you hear those words interchangeably. So they're awarded to donors who contribute to the foundation through the annual fund, through Polio Plus, or any approved foundation grants if you're a donor directly to a, a global grant. You're awarded foundation points. Um, and it's a for every dollar donated, it's it's one point. If you contribute to the endowment fund, um, those contributions aren't aren't eligible. If you, you know, think about that, because that donation, you can make a cash donation, but a lot of those donations are actually going to occur in the future. Um, they do not count toward Paul Harris Society or major donor recognition. That's all actual cash that counts towards Paul Harris Society and, and major donor. Um, a donor can transfer their recognition points to someone else to help them qualify as a Paul Harris Fellow, which we'll cover in a moment what that is, or multiple Paul Harris Fellow. So just know that you can use those points and um, transfer those to others to help them reach a level or recognize somebody. And those points belong to the donor until their death or until they're transferred. And just a few other little things. There's a minimum um, transfer level of, uh, of 100 points. As a club foundation chair, you'll probably do, be doing some matching and transferring. So you'll, you'll want to know and be familiar with this. And of course, there's a handout where this information is, is, um, is all, all recorded, which we'll make available to you. And there's a form to, to do all of this. Um, a deceased individual can be recognized as a memorial Paul Harris Fellow. Um, somebody asked me a question recently was, is there an age limit or, you know, can, can, you know, someone, a minor be recognized? And the answer is yes, there, there is, there is no age limit. Um, it doesn't matter the age of the individual, but it has to be an individual. Um, if you want to recognize a business or an organization, they would get a certificate of appreciation. Where do you find this information? Well, if it's you, um, you go in and you look at your donor history report. When you log into My Rotary, you'll see something called your profile, and there'll be a, a link you can click on for donor history, and you'll you'll see all of your own information. And we encourage you to look that at that. We encourage you to encourage other people to look at that their own. You know, do some donor self care and make sure you know people are familiar with with what they've got, what they've done. And you can look on the club recognition summary. This is another report you can run, which we're going to cover in more detail when we look at reports. But you see, um, and, and by the way, we've redacted, you know, all the um, personal information, but we want you to see what a report looks like. So for each individual, so each, each of these lines is, is an individual member, and you can see what their recognition amount is which is a sum of donation and Paul Harris Fellow points. Um, what their current Paul Harris Fellow level is, so you see Paul Harris plus two, plus four, Paul Harris, um, what date they became a Paul Harris Fellow, 
and how many points they have available. So this person here, their recognition amount is 5,420, but they only have 2,120 points available. They probably, you know, donated those points or used those points um, for something. So you can always see, you know, how many points an individual in your in your club um, has available. And um, Ricka, you 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 have some really great things to say about using Paul Harris points to inspire giving. Any let you uh, cover this one. Um, what I really think is important, our club has built up points because of club contributions to the foundation. And about once every other year, we make offers to uh, club members and I do it, but you know, say somebody had contributed $300 towards their Paul Harris fellow. And our club, if they'll donate the other $200, we'll use 500 points so they could become a Paul Harris fellow or name somebody else a Paul Harris fellow. So feel, you know, use those club points that you might have, or if you have club members that have excessive amounts of points because they give, you know, don't be bashful and ask, would you be willing to help encourage others to give by giving up some of your points? And you can transfer it from member to member or from the club to a member and so forth. But it's an ideal thing because once you become a Paul Harris fellow, you've taken more ownership in our foundation. And every time we present a Paul Harris fellow in our club, pre-COVID and after COVID, we ask after we make the presentation, would all the Paul Harris fellows in the room stand up? And our club's been around for a long time and most of the club members, but I would feel a little bit awkward if I was one of those people sitting down. And we don't do it to make those people feel awkward, but it's a way to continuously recognize those club members for giving. That's great. Um, and, and another thing you can do with your club's Paul Harris Fellow points is to recognize and make Paul Harris Fellows um, out of non-Rotarians, outstanding non-Rotarians in your community. My club does Absolutely. that, I know other clubs do. And we ask our members to nominate um, individuals in the community. We use the areas of focus. And so, uh, no, we use the, the five avenues of service actually. And we ask them to nominate people along one of the five avenues of service. And then we use our clubs, um, Paul Harris Fellow points to um, make them Paul Harris Fellows. And we have a, a great meeting. We tell their stories, they bring guests and we have a big celebration. So that's, that's a great thing you can do as well. Rachel, you have a question here. You might have to go back to your previous screen. It says, how do you find club points? Um, we're going to come to that. Hold oh, on to okay. that. That will that will actually show up. It's on that same report, but it's not showing up. Oh, oh, there it is. I'm sorry. There it is. It's in yellow. So where I've got the yellow highlight, um, this actually says Rotary Club of blah, blah, blah. And, um, and these are the points that are held at the club level. In this case, 43,221.86. So you'll see that toward the top of this particular report, the club recognition summary. You know, Rachel, you have another question here. Mm -hmm. And the question says, I have never figured out how to get a report from my club members who are at the 10,000 plus giving level. Is that even possible? Yes, and we're gonna, we're gonna come to that um, because this report tops out at Paul Harris Fellow plus eight. Anyone who's um, at the 10,000 or above level, major donor above level, it, it, it'll just show, I believe this will just show Paul Harris Fellow plus eight. There, there is a report called Major Donor Arch Clump Society, Bequest Society that you run and you can, you can see where, where those individuals are at. And we're, we're gonna come to that. So that's a great question. foundation recognition levels. So um, we touched on this when we were talking about the points, but we wanna lay it out to you. Um, so there's a, a, something called a sustaining member, and that's someone who contributes $100 or more each rotary year to the annual fund. And they used to make stickers available for that. I understand they don't make these stickers available anymore, but, but yet this is really an, an important level 
of giving $100 a year per person to the annual fund that helps us sustain the um, the service projects that we're doing. So that that's something you really want to to try to strive for. And, and you can make your own stickers. You know, we don't need to order them from the Rotary Foundation. You, you can recognize, um, you know, individuals in your own kind of way who are at the sustaining member level. And we, we talked a few minutes ago about Paul Harris Fellows. And so when you reach the thousand dollar, you know, combination of donation and points, you become a Paul Harris Fellow. Uh, there's a pin, there's a cert certificate, and that ultimately ends up in the hands um, typically of the club foundation chair or the club president, you know, to be, to, to recognize those, those individuals. And it's important that you, you know, consider and think through how the club does that at what frequency, you know, what traditions do you want to try to invoke? You know, Rick shared the example of what his club does, but this, you know, this is really important and special. And at the same time, you know, at the multiple Paul Harris fellow levels, there's, there's a new pin that comes um, at each thousand dollar combination of thousand dollar, thousand points, you know, all the way up to Paul Harris fellow plus, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, uh, plus, plus, plus eight. Yeah. Which would be $9,000 because Paul Harris is itself is 1000. So you want to, um, you know, recognize and, and celebrate these. The Certificate of Appreciation, this is available to organizations or businesses. Um, don't overlook it. It's, it's important. It's a great way to raise awareness of our Rotary Foundation. Rick, back to you, Paul Harris Society. Oh, right. My favorite topic. Paul Harris Society, as I said earlier, it, are those individuals in our district who have committed to giving $1,000 a year to our foundation. And with that, you can see you get a special pin that's a, you know, the PHS that you can put underneath another pin. But I think it's important to uh, promote this in your club because if people don't know about it, they can't support it. And you will be amazed at the number of people that have the ability and want to support our foundation at that level. So that's what the Paul Harris Society is, is to really step up the giving. And obviously, as you know, part of those dollars come back to your club three years later. So it's benefiting the club, it's benefiting the district, but most importantly, all of this giving from $100 a year to a major donor or whatever it might be, we're making lives better, not hundreds, not thousands, but millions of lives better around the world because of our support of our foundation. Thank you. And, and again, it doesn't happen automatically. They don't, someone doesn't become Paul Harris Society when they give it the thousand dollar level, they actually have to apply. And, and, and the reason, you know, goes back to what Rick was saying, this was something that was actually started by districts. It wasn't started by RI or the Rotary Foundation. It was, um, you know, it was member driven. So that's why it's, it's an opt-in program. So you wanna make sure people are aware of it and, and have the opportunity to join. And when you hear apply, don't think you could be denied. I mean, don't, if you make right. that commitment, no, you <laughs> it's, but we need to know because then it goes into our records and then you'll get properly recognized with the, mm -hmm. it's called a Chevron with the PHS on there. Right, right. So do you want me to run with this, Rachel? Absolutely. Okay. Major donors. Major donors are individuals or couples. My wife and I are both major donors, but it is those individuals that have given, it could be at one time, it could be over a period of time, at least $10,000 to our foundation. And at various levels, there's a level one, two, three, four that you can see on the screen. It goes all the way to level 10. We don't have any level 10s, never had a level 10. And if you want to write a check for $10 million, I would be more than happy to deliver that to the foundation for you. <laughs> but it's a great way to give to our foundation because you believe in what our foundation does. And then you also obviously get some snazzy jewelry to go with it and a nice crystal. Absolutely. 
Next. And in fact, those level 10, you know, this now called the Arch Clump Society, um, the, the, the founder and, of the Rotary Foundation. Yeah, and that might be something, you know, I shared those books with you, but just study up on Arch Clump in 1917. He had a vision of us mm -hmm. having a foundation and it really never got anywhere until after Paul Harris died and people started donating. So there's something called the Arch Clump Society and Arch Clump was the founder of our foundation and is for individuals and couples again, who make a cumulative donation of $250,000 or more. And you can see on the screen, the various level. And again, we don't have any platinum foundation circles, but we'd be more than happy for our first. I'm gonna pause here because a question came in Okay. And bear with me. It says the thousand could be accumulate of various donations throughout the year. And that answer is yes. I assume we're talking about the Paul Harris Society. And mm -hmm. yes, it doesn't have to be a one time. Like I do it on my credit card. Uh, it hits my credit card four times a year. If you do it on your club dues and then your dues are monthly or something, it's, it's just during that rotary year, July 1st to June 30th. And yes, Rotary needs to receive the money by June 30th. If your club treasurer takes his or her time, it doesn't get the check-in until after July 1, then it counts towards the next year. Right, that's right. And it could be a donation to the annual fund, Polio Plus, or any approved foundation grant, and any of any of those things. So, and it is Rotary year, so it crosses over into two different fiscal years. Absolutely. So you want to pay attention to that. Okay. Okay. Next. Um, and if you, oh, oh if, okay, go back one. Just if you're ever up at RI, and which I would advise you to have a club field trip up there and call ahead more than a day uh, to arrange for a tour of the, of the headquarters, there is an area called, you know, it's for the Rotary Foundation, but you can see the Arch Clump Society, and you do get your picture up on the wall indefinitely. Yeah. Next. Yeah, absolutely. This is probably the easiest way to give. It's called the Bequest Society. Again, individuals or couples who make commitments in their estate plans, totaling $10,000 or more to the Rotary Foundation. And I kid you not, and I do this in front of donors, it's the easiest way to give. You don't even have to write the check. All you have to do is die. Now I say that jokingly, but I mean that. A lot of people take Donna and myself. You know, if I were to pass today, our assets still need to be there for Donna until she passes. But upon both of our passing, then our gift, and I'm not bragging, but we're at a level six, we have a, a bequest going to the Rotary Foundation, but it's upon both of our passing. It doesn't have to be upon the first. You can arrange it that it's after both of you have passed. So then the survivor of the couple still has access to money while they're here. But it's a really an easy way to give. And when you get to certain levels, you can earmark where you want your bequest to go. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Rick. Next. And the Legacy Society is the same, but it, at higher levels. Yeah, at a million dollars or more. And yes, mm -hmm. right now we have one person in our district who is a level one Legacy, Leg Legacy Society member. Mm -hmm. And you know, is just another way to be recognized. None of us do this to be recognized, but it is nice to get a pat on the back. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And a benefactor. And you, you hear about this the least amount, and it used to be more prevalent, but a benefactor is someone who leaves a provision in their estate plan uh, of $1,000 or more to the Rotary Foundation, but less than 10000 Right. So it's not saying that Rotary doesn't want a smaller gift. They're more than happy to accept those because those are very important. But it's just 1,000 to 9,999, and then at 10,000, it starts everything else we've talked about. And the other thing about the benefactor is, or they can make a, an outright gift right now. Thank you. I apologize for that. Thank yeah. you, Rachel. No, it, yeah, no, absolutely. And I think we got a question just pop in, oh, so we'll take a check. pause here. I'm glad you caught that. Yeah. Uh, I got a scroll here. Bear with me. How do you find club clients? How do we see who in our club is a member of the Paul Harris Society? Um, if you email me or call me, I could give you that information. 
I don't know where is publicly accessible. Is there a place, Rachel? There's a report. There's a report. Yeah, we're okay. going to cover that. But... Oh, okay. Hold that thought, Chris. <laughs> But it's always, good, it's always good to talk to Rick anyway. So <laughs> what's our and, next screen? Yep. And oh, this this is the fine print. I just wanted, you know, we threw a lot of numbers around and they were on a slide. But when you run the um, major donor report, you get all of this information, what the different levels are. So have no fear that it's all it's all documented and you don't have to just remember it. Just for the record, Chris, uh, because I was doing Paul Hare Society work today, uh, you have nine members in the Paul Hare Society from your club. Back to you, Rachel. Awesome. Um, and, and every year there's um, there's club recognition banners. They're, they're often called. And uh, they come out, they're, a, they're sent to the district governor in the fall. And last year we gave them out at our foundation dinner. This year we didn't have it because of COVID, but they will be given out at our May 27th um, recognition event. So stay tuned for that. But the, um, the banners are if a club, uh, a club can be recognized for 100% foundation giving. And that's where um, uh, the per capita giving in the club to annual fund polio plus or foundation grants, you know, all together is $100 or more. And everyone gives at least $25. So that's the 100% foundation giving. The 100% ro every Rotarian every year is that per capita. Um, the club is giving $100 per person on average to the annual fund and everyone has given at least $25. Th those are the two that we, we focus on the most. Um, there's also a banner for the top three giving clubs to the annual fund per capita. So who the clubs that have given the most per person to the annual fund are recognized with a banner. Um, there's also a certificate that isn't mentioned here. Uh, oh, it, it is the In Polio Now campaign certificate of appreciation. Any club that gives $1,500 or more to the, in, to the Polio Plus Fund is recognized with a certificate um, any clubs that where everyone is a Paul Harris Fellow is recognized as 100% Paul Harris Fellow Club. And that designation never goes away. It's a banner that you would only earn once because they assume that once you get to that, that, that you maintain it. So those, um, and there are actually clubs that are 100% Paul Harris Society. So that's another banner you can achieve. And, or if everyone um, contributes to the, uh, is a benefactor. That's the 100% Rotary Promise Club. Everybody's a, a benefactor. That's that thousand dollar level um, commitment or outright donation to the endowment fund. So um, we're gonna, we've already promoted Rotary Direct. Uh, Rick- um, uh, Put it on your credit card. Really, yeah, did it up there. So we'll move this through this pretty quickly. It's the best way to go. Um, put it on your credit card. Uh, you can you do it by signing into my rotary, your my rotary account. You can set it all up. And, you know any amount um, that you want on a monthly, quarterly, or or annual basis. You can stop it at any time you want to. You can go in and just stop. So it's it's really easy to. Sorry, do. Rachel, you're wrong. There is no stopping. Once you're in, you're in. <laughs> what am I saying? I mean, update your credit card. Ah. Thank you. Or increase the amount. And, and and you have the ability to designate where it goes to, whether it's annual fund, polio, or you know what whatever changes you want you want to make to that. So, yeah, I said the forbidden word. I didn't mean to say it. <laughs> and if you want to promote Rotary Direct signups in your club. Um, think about using Paul Harris fellow recognition points, you know, running a campaign to get people to sign up, you know, be, be creative and put some incentives out there because this will be your best friend is getting people to sign up for Rotary Direct. It makes life easier for your treasurer, for, for everybody, and it just all happens automatically and on time. Don't have to worry about the mail, filling out forms, you know, any of that kind of stuff. So we'll move over into reports, um, and uh, there, there are quite a few, uh, but they all have a, their own unique purpose. 
um, and we'll we'll go ahead. You've seen a few of them already. Just want to highlight the personal data use policy, um, and uh, this is information is is available on my Rotary. But you know, please be aware that um, it's sensitive information, and it's perfectly permissible to to use it um, for, for your work as club foundation chair. Um, but it it should not never go outside of Rotary or be used for any other purpose. And I think just to really dovetail on this, I mean, even from the hundred dollars on up, you're you're talking to people about their finances, and that can be rather personal. So you have to really emphasize, and this is what I do. You know, I say our conversations are off the record. It goes no further than the two of us or how many people you're talking to. But I think that puts them a little bit more at ease as opposed to, is this going to be in the club's newsletter? Right. And, and, and just want to dial back to recognition. We were talking about different recognition levels and, you know, recognizing them in some traditional way in your club. It is important first to check with the individual and make sure they want to be recognized. There are some people who don't want to be recognized. So you have to follow their personal preference, you know, find out if, if they do not want to be recognized and just recognize that there's an anonymous, you know, donor at a particular level. So the first is the donor history report. This is individual. You can only see your own. You can't look at anybody else's. Um, you know, people will come to you with questions about what they themselves did. And the best thing to do is point them in the direction of their own donor history report, which they can access by logging into my Rotary. And um, just up by their profile, it'll say um, donor history and there's a link and it'll take them to their, their own report. There's a summary page, they can see what they've done. Um, and then there's a, a detailed transaction page where they can see, you know, see everything bit by bit. If for some reason they have you know, difficulty with that, um, they can also contact the support center. And if, if it's um, beyond that, just let us know and we'll, we'll try to help. But there's no way that you or me or any of us can access their individual history. You can only do it yourself. Um, the Club Foundation banner report we looked at a few minutes ago. Um, you can see the, um, no, maybe we didn't. We looked at a different report, the recognition report. The, the Foundation banner report, you can see the eligible dates that an individual um, achieved every Rotarian, every year status, and also um, the a foundation giving the TRF, you know, giving um, status for, for the year and sustaining member. So you can see these are all individuals um, and, and the date on which they may or may not have achieved that status. You also see whether they're Paul Harris Society members and whether they're enrolled in Rotary Direct. You can also look at the club and see what percent the club is at for um, 100% TRF giving, foundation giving, EREY, sustaining member. The sustaining member is each person giving $100 or more, um, not per capita, but actually doing it. And then what percent of the members are Paul Harris Society eligible? This was run in February um, of last year. So, you know, there were still many months left to the Rotary year. So it wasn't unusual to see, you know, red. There, this report was run. It was a different club. Um, after that Rotary year was was finished, it was run in July for the previous Rotary year that had just ended, and you can see that in this case, you know, this club achieved 100% foundation giving, 100% EREY, 100% sustaining members. Um, they didn't have any Paul Harris Society eligible, but everybody gave. Um, you know, at, at this basic level, which was, which was great. And they could see this information. So you can run that report. You can see where individuals are at. You can see where your club is at overall. This is the fundraising analysis that we looked at earlier um, that you want to use for 
goal setting and just, you know, seeing how the club is doing on your annual fund goal, you know, versus um, previous years. Unfortunately, it only shows the annual fund, but um, yeah, but, but it just does give you a lot of information. The monthly contribution report, this is the one I ran at the district level. So it shows all of the clubs. When you run it at the club level, you'll, you'll see just your club, but it, it shows um, the annual fund goal, how many members, what percent of the goal has been achieved, the per capita, what was given that month and year to date, and then what's been given to other funds, polio plus, grants, endowment, um, et cetera. You can also see this in Club Central as well, but it's, it's a handy um, snapshot report. And in the last page of the report, it actually defines what's included in each of these areas, annual fund, other funds, endowment fund. Um, it's, it's helpful to, to look at that information. And the Polio Plus report is, is really the same thing. This was, um, it could be run at the district or club level. This is the district report. But when you run it at the club level, you, you see just for your club, um, the, your goal, what percent of goal you're at, your year-to-date contributions, um, the previous year's contributions, and what you've given to other funds as well. The club recognition summary, we did, um, we did look at that previously. It's a really important um, report. You can see members, Paul Harris, fellow levels, their recognition amount, the amount of foundation points they have available, whether they're participating in Rotary Direct, you can see that, whether or not they're a benefactor, um, what the last date of their contribution was and the designation. You can never see the amount, but you can see um, uh, what the date was and what overall level that they're at. You can also see you know, who hasn't donated as well. And you can you see also the totalization of your club's all-time foundation giving. So here's an example um, of, of the report and it's the same one we looked at earlier. Uh, and so you can see the club's total foundation recognition points at this time, 43,000. Um, my screen is obstructed. I can't read the all-time giving number, but you'll see it up there circled in red. $468,023. Okay. Now that, that's, that's an important thing. You know, that, that's helpful to be able to tell your members from time to time. But any individual, you can see, um, you know, this person here. They last, and this is an old report, so this is from a year ago. Um, they had last given to the foundation in October of 2019. They gave to annual fund share. They're not in Rotary Direct. Um, this person here, you can see that they are in Rotary Direct. So, you know, it gives you an idea of um, what's, what's going in um, and, and helps you. Paul Harris Society report. So um, there is a report you can run at the club level to see who your Paul Harris Society members are. There's two different tabs. This is the summary tab and there's a detail tab that has all their contact information, um, address, um, email, all that type of thing. And you'll see what this report shows is anyone who's said they are a Paul Harris Society member, they, they joined it, um, and anyone who's eligible. So you see here, Paul Harris Society member, yes. So these individuals with a Y are Paul Harris Society members. And you can see the years in which they gave at the $1,000 level or more. Um, here's someone who's a Paul Harris Society member, but they haven't actually given at that level. So, you know, it's- Can I come in here? Yes, please. Okay. Yeah. A couple of things that you need to be aware of. And I'm looking at, uh, let's, go, let's go to the second line where you see Paul Harris Society member, yes. And then you look to the right and they haven't given. Um, what uh, my partner in crime dealing with all this is Chris Riley from the Darien Club, past sister governor. But Chris and I review this every year. And if somebody hasn't given for several years, 
they really aren't a member of the Paul Hare Society. They were at one time, but they really aren't anymore and their names removed. But here's where you could come into play. Look down uh, towards the bottom, you got a Y blank Y under Paul Harris member, but that where there's no Paul Harris Society member, you can see they gave for the last four years at that level. There mm -hmm. would be an ideal candidate for you to talk to and say, hey, you've been giving, would you like to become a member of the Paul Harris Society? And they may say, yes, I didn't know about it. But then we can change their status so they are properly recognized and get their little chevron with the PHS on it. But that would be a great prospecting list for you within your club is to say, you know, you've been giving, would you like to become a member? And if somebody isn't giving, they said they would, that's not your responsibility to chase them. That's my reason. And I don't chase them, but I'm just saying, you know, well, you haven't given in two years, you know, do not, do not do that. But this is a great prospecting where you can see club members who are giving and that would encourage them to continue giving. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So it's, it's a great tool and, and Rick, and, and if they say yes, um, Rick will help you out. Uh, Absolutely. With, Just with contact that. me with the process. And then here's the, the report you can run to see who your major donor, Arch Clump Society, the Quest Society members are. So uh, we have all the, the names redacted, but this is a real report. And you'll see, you know, they're identified major donor level one, the date it was achieved, um, level two, level four, bequest society level two, legacy society level one, like Rick was saying, we do have someone, you know, in, in that, in, in when, when it was achieved. So this is important information. Um, you'll, you know, you'll want to know and be aware of who these individuals are, or these couples, and, uh, and you can run this report and, and get that information. Anything else about this report you want to add, Rick? Nope. Okay. And then there's another report for Paul Harris Fellow and Benefactors. I don't know why they're in the same report, but they are. <laughs> uh, maybe they have something to do with thousand dollar levels. Um, and you'll, you'll, this is a more voluminous report, but you can run it and you, you, and, and what's really neat about it, you can run it in a way where you see everyone, or you can just say the ones who for this year. So it gives you some choices and you'll see um, everyone who's at Paul Harris fellow when they achieved it. And then it goes on up, Paul plus one, plus two, you know, and, and on up and, and when they achieved it all the way up to plus eight. Uh, and then the benefactors. So these are people who've um, endowed or given outright $1,000 or, or more to the endowment fund and when they achieve that. So those, those are all, the, all of the reports. I'm sure you'll have questions about them as you get into them, but the most important thing is to make sure you have access. So, you know, please do reach out to us. We would go in and do live demonstrations, except we'd come up, we'd be showing the data and we, we, we can't do that. I am reaching out to the Rotary Foundation to see if they can, uh, I've heard there's a webinar that they can do. Maybe they have a database that's not, not real donors or not real people. And, and you can you can see how that that actually works. Um, but do reach out to us with any questions. The reports are, are really valuable. We want you to use those. Um, and we're going to uh, wrap up here within 20 minutes or less. So we we said we'd be done by 8:30. So the last um, thing we're going to cover is inspiring your club members to give to the foundation. And everything we've talked about tonight, we've really woven that in. Um, cause that, that's so important is the inspiration and it's putting the impact first, putting the why and a lot of different ways to do that. So we, while we've been talking about numbers and amounts and levels, we do want people to know that gifts of any size have a big impact. Um, you know, people have different circumstances, different situations. So it is important to know and, and, you know, let them realize that you know anything that they're able to do actually will will make a difference and it's so important to raise 
the club's understanding of the foundation and, and tell the stories um, all along the way. So here, here's some of the ideas, um, you know, being an advocate for the foundation, having a committee, getting the members engaged, you know, devoting time in your meetings on a regular basis to the foundation, how, you know, you're engaging it, participating yourselves or what's what Rotary might be doing globally, that's significant. Celebrating World Polio Day every October 24th and, you know, in some way. Um, we can speak, you know, we, we can help you out with ideas, but as club foundation chairs, you'll get an email about a month or so ahead of time about a toolkit for that day. And there, there's a lot of um, a good resources available. There's always a live stream, you know, somewhere in the world where there's um, the Global Polio Eradication Initiative Partners. Um, that's us, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, Centers for Disease Control, the WHO, and um, Avi, uh, or Gavi, um, is the newest member are doing a live stream together. That's usually extremely informative. Um, so that's a thing to tap into. November's foundation month. So it's, it's a great month to, to focus on the foundation and, um, you know, use your assets, your, your social media, your, your club website um, for that. My personal favorite day for the foundation is March 22nd because that's World Water Day and water is very important to me. So absolutely and um you know and that that that's a that that's a great day to highlight one of the the best ways that we can help and impact people um as you learn more about the foundation because of your responsibility in your club have club members yourself but if you have somebody who gives regularly you know you could do the hundred dollars a year but if you have somebody that steps up and now is a Paul Harris plus three or now a major donor of Bequest Society, if they're willing, have them tell their story. Why are they doing it? It's great to hear all the great work Rotary does, but it's even greater when they hear their own club member talking on why they do something. And I think that would really help your job as well. I think that makes all the difference in the world, you know, hearing our own stories and, and why someone gives that's um, I think that has the biggest impact on, on people. So do take the time for that and in, in uh, share, share that um, with your club members. And it's easy through zoom, uh, it turns out. And, and, and you can also connect, you know, with someone, a, a, a beneficiary of a project who may not be able to actually visit your club, but might be available like Rick, you know, um, tapping into the folks in Sierra Leone and having them come on live and, you know, share uh, the impact with your club. So all, all kinds of great ideas. Um, and we touched on most of these things already, generating annual fund support, you know, setting those goals, engaging your new members, you know, never overlook the opportunity to engage your new members in the Rotary foundation and you know and mentoring them that's a great opportunity to get them signed up for rotary direct right away and <laughs> make it part of your of your um uh giving them giving them that opportunity uh, it's obviously it's an opportunity um but put that right in front of them they'll they'll definitely appreciate it versus writing checks um and in saying thank you uh and if you uh the foundation does have an employer matching gift program. So don't forget to ask your members if, if their employer matches and because the foundation will, um, will take that. Rick, donor stewardship. <laughs> um, there's a lot of things, obviously, but when you're recognizing people for giving, I cannot emphasize enough to include the family. Mm -hmm. um, it's not just the Rotarian doing something, it's them and their spouse or whatever the politically correct term, the partner or whatever, but never hesitate. And earlier somebody asked about, uh, is there an age limit? I have three grandchildren they all became Paul Harris fellows uh, before they probably could talk. Mm -hmm. uh, and at some future date, grandpa will explain all that to them. 
but make it a special thing for them. In the third one down, I don't care what you're doing. It could be birthday gifts. It could be gifts to the foundation. A handwritten thank you note makes all the difference in the world. I'm not a believer in saying thank you through an email. When you get a handwritten thank you note in the mail, it means so much more. And then always continue to recognize those donors. As I said in our club, we always recognize all the Paul Harris fellows every time we present a Paul Harris fellow. And I think that's equally as important. A thank you is something that is dying and is the most important thing. It's important for people to give. It's even more important to thank them for giving. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And um, I think we beat still, that horse to death on the Rotary Direct. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I think we did. There's so many different ways that you can make the foundation your charity of choice. So, um, but the key yeah. to giving the foundation number four says mail your gift directly to the foundation. It has to be affiliated with your membership number for you to get credit. They're not going to say, oh, John Smith mailed us a check. I don't know how many John Smiths there are in the Rotary world, but they're not going to try to find you. So you really, there, there is the proper way of doing it. And it would just make sure you get credit because I can't tell you the number of Rotarians. Well, I gave in the past, but there's no record of it. And then we find out that the, the, club treasurer just mailed in a check with nobody's name affiliated to any of the donations. So really, really, really make sure you do it so they know who you are. They don't know you by name, but they do know you by your membership number. Yeah. And if checks are mailed in and, and since we're not doing this live, we haven't passed out forms, but you know, there's contribution forms, individual form or multi-donor forms that have to be filled out. That's got the member number and all of that. And the links to those forms will be in the um, email that, that you get um, as well. But with Rotary Direct, you don't have to worry about that. It's, it's all automatic. And there is a new tool that has come out this year called Raise for Rotary. It's a peer-to-peer -peer, um, fundraising tool that individuals or, or groups can use to raise money for, um, you, you decide it, a polio, it could be um, for a global grant, it, it could be for an area of focus. And you, um, it, it's, it's a neat tool, you configure it, um, you run a campaign, you can do it through email and also link it to social media. And it, and it raises money. When we ran our district's um, polio campaign, this, I think, I'm trying to remember what we called it, um, Heroes for Polio or Pioneers for Polio, we, we use the, uh, the new Raise for Rotary fundraising tool. So it's just, it's another neat thing in the toolkit. I will tell you though, you can't raise for the annual fund um, with this tool. So just, just be aware of that. And resources. Um, there's a lot of resources that we've touched on. We do this in person. We, we pass out copies, but instead you'll get, you'll get links um, to all of these. So there's foundation videos um, that are available through the Rotary website. We also have our own video that, you know, that we had prepared for our annual fund campaign. That's really timeless. Annual reports, foundation facts. There's several reference guides that are very handy. One um, talking about the club foundation chair committee role or committee chair role goes into detail. Um, working with your club foundation committee, understanding the recognition points. There's a reference guide. So it, you know, all of these are, are great documents to have on your computer at your fingertips. So we'll make sure that you have links to all of that. And in my rotary, there's a fundraising page, which has links to a lot of these and some additional information. There's a frequently asked um, questions about Rotary Direct. And there's all kinds of newsletters, e-newsletters that you can sign up for through my Rotary. Um, you go in to your account, you click on um, news, you click on newsletters and it comes up with a whole list of e-news you can sign up for. And I'd recommend that you sign up for some of these that are related to foundation. Giving in Grants is a great one. And Polio Now, Peace in Action, and Learning and Development. And they come out, I think they all come out monthly or, or every other month. And they're, they're a great resource, really keeps you on top of things. 
and it gives you things that you can share and engage your club with. And of course, the online learning center, I just want to highlight there are many courses available, you know, feel free to take any of them. Um, but for club foundation chair, there's a Rotary Foundation basics and then a club Rotary Foundation Committee Basics. So we saw the curriculum a little bit earlier that you ought to um, look at. And our district website, the foundation page on our district website actually currently has the links to almost all of these resources that we've mentioned. So um, when I send the email, you know, I will have links embedded in the email, but I'll also give you the link to that page where you can, you can access these as well. So there's a lot of different ways to, to get to that information. This was our video that we put together earlier this year. We're not gonna show it tonight, but it is also on the um, district website on the annual giving page under foundation. You'll find that video there. And I think the last thing we just say is, you know, thank you um, for being, you know, part of our, our work to do good in the world together. And this, this is a photo from our iPads um, project. This is the Aurora Sunrise and the Aurora um, Rotary Club uh, visiting over at the Amita um, Medical Center there in Aurora and providing, I think it was I think it was four iPads um, to them and they were, they were absolutely blown away and super appreciative of that and um, just, just what we do. So I am going to stop sharing and you get uh, Rick and I live. Yay. Yay. Um, I just want to say thank you to each and every one of you for stepping up to serve in this capacity. And I would really encourage you to have fun. I truly believe you have the best job in the club. Have fun, learn, and Rachel and I and the rest of the committee are here to be resources to you. And if you ever need a speaker, I love talking to clubs either via Zoom or live in person. I just need time because my entire life revolves around my calendar. But the point being is thank you, thank you, thank you, because you guys are going to make a huge difference this up and coming Rotary year. And I'm looking in the chat right now because there are some questions in the chat and I think we've answered them. Um, we have to stand on top of it. We're on top of it. Yeah, yeah. And uh, someone wants to stay on afterwards, Marsha. So when we stop recording, Marsha, you, you, know, you, you can stay on and we can unmute you. Um, but again, thank, thank you very much. Uh, you know, don't hesitate to reach out to us. You know, we're love um, helping you know, working together, it's, it's a team. So I'm going to um, join Rick and thank you for, for joining us tonight. We'll go ahead and stop recording. <laughs>